Praise the Lord. We serve a living, all-powerful, miracle worker God. Amen. This morning, we continued our series on the miracle of Jesus, and we um, believe that this is a timing um, series that we need to learn, because I strongly believe that God is about to unpack the miraculous to help mankind at this time and this age. Because so many people are hurting, so many things is going on that is take the power of God, the miraculous power of God to change our situation. And we believe um, that in this series, for two things to happen, one is that you will have faith for miracle. Because it takes faith to see the miracle of God manifest. And we um, have looked into a couple um, miracles already. And we say that there is one ingredient, there is one part that you can see throughout um, the 35 miracles that Jesus performed um, that have been selected and recorded for us in the four gospel. And we believe that um, um, when we learn from the word of God, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. And this will build up our faith, uh, the faith for a miracle. And we uh, strongly believe that that will set you up in the place that you can receive a miracle. The second thing that I prayed and, um, uh, and believe for you that um, you will become ready to be used by God to be part of a miracle that we can minister to people to bring miracle to someone who in need. And we are the conduit that God will use uh, just like the part that God gives to many um, believer and people at that time, that they have a part, um, the servant have a part to bring uh, washing water and fill the jar, and then it's turned into finest wine. Um, we see people who bring what they can to the table, and we see that God turns it into uh, a miracle. And they have the blessing of be part of um, and they have the experience that they have with God. And so miracle uh, is all we need. We need for our life and people around us need it. That's why we, we study, we learn to strengthen our faith, to remind us and get ourselves ready to be used by God. I believe that the miracle working God of the Old Testament is still a miracle working God today because it never changed. The scripture tells us that the same God who did miracle in the past, he will continue to do it today and tomorrow because he never changed. Psalm 77 verse 14, we have looked at and recap here. Um, the scripture tells us that you are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the people. Other versions say he declared his work among nations. He wants people to see. He wants people to witness and see the miracle working of God. And because of the technologies and the um, media that today than ever, we have the opportunity to see, to expose, to watch um, the miracle of God is take place in people's lives and, and on and on. And we can see this all over. Um, so I strongly believe that God wants to do it in front of nations so people can watch and see and know that he is a good God and he wants to take care of us. Um, in the uh, Living Bible, it said that you are the God of miracle and wonder. You still demonstrate your awesome power. Uh, God wants to demonstrate his awesome power because the devil, Satan, have, um, uh, in a sense, success 
to tell people about his work. You see the destruction of the devil work all over this planet Earth. But there's a God who's more powerful than Satan. And he wants us to know that he is our powerful God. And we can believe in him. And we, when we have God in our side, we will gain victory. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 9, said, He does great things to marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. He do great thing to marvelous to understand because it's supernatural and the way that God doing it is beyond our um, understanding. That's why we call it miracle. And we have defined miracle is God intervention into the natural. The natural say this and this will take place and it's going in this direction. But when God intervenes into that situation, he can turn it around and take it to the other direction that he wants it to be. So miracle is something, the supernatural power of God intervenes into our difficult situation. When you're in difficulty, when you're in the impossible um, circumstance, you are the candidate for the miracle of God. And we see throughout the Bible, especially in the New Testament in Jesus' ministry, people in dire need, people in need, they, they, they need God, they need some power that come in and rescue them and help them. And we see in that place, when they put their faith in God, He come through for them. What a wonderful the scripture that uh, we've been reminded throughout this series is Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. This is the question that the Almighty God asked us, as his prophet. It's not the question that we ask God, but God asks people. He say, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for me? That's the question that God posed to us. Is there anything too hard for me? Of course, we know that the answer is no. There's nothing is too hard for God. The one who created this universe from nothing into now is existent. You know, men when they're talking about, they do wonder. They have to use the substance that God already created. But God can create something out of nothing because His creative power. The scripture tells us that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. From nothing, He declared it in its existence. And his word continue to undergird, keep it all together. That's how powerful our God is. We serve a miracle working God. And Jesus still a miracle working Jesus that we read in the Bible. And we hear from other people, the testimony is the one who wants to work and move on our behalf. The Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. He never changed. You know, that is important for us to remind ourselves. And that scripture has helped me stand in faith for the last 38 years when I served the Lord in ministry. And it's, it's, it's helped me when I face uh, death, we run out of fresh water on our boat in somewhere in South China Sea. And I remember that verse. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I put my trust, my faith in that Jesus. I said, God, Jesus, you can do for others. You can do in the past. You can do for me. 
and I received that miracle, and God has sustained my life. As I promised him and said, Lord, save me, spare my life. I will give the rest of my life to tell people about your love and your grace. And he did. And here I am, 42 years later, still stand and declare the goodness of God because he has spared my life. When things is impossible, we have people already died on our boat, and um, I'm in a few other young men uh, take turn and toss their body into the ocean because we, um, we need that space. And we are dying because we run out of fresh water. Water everywhere surrounding us, but the salt water, ocean water, we cannot drink it. And I prayed, and the Lord has sent the rain, and it sustained us, and it spared my life. That the God that I experienced until today, and I want to introduce you to that God, that Jesus. It's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The question I want to ask you this morning is, do you believe in faith healing? For me, I strongly believe that. Because throughout the Word of God, the Bible teaches that by faith, we can receive our healing. By faith, we can receive our miracle because it takes the word of God to command, to leading us, and we totally obey and walk according to what he has said. The great um, evangelist, Reinhard Bonnke, for his year of ministry in Africa, um, he said that he led um, about 57 million people to the Lord. And when he came to our revival conference and preached the message, walk on water, he shared with us something that um, um, is new for me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm always believed that Peter is the one who um, asked the Lord, and then by faith, he walked on water. But Reinhard Bonnke say, um, the reason why Peter can walk on water is not just his faith alone, but he walked on the water by Jesus' word. Jesus say, come. He said the key for Peter to walk on water is C-O-M-E, come. Because when he speaks, he gives Peter the ability when he obeys, step out of the boat and he can walk in obedience. And he is the first man on this planet Earth. Walk on liquid. Walk on water. So we need to put our faith in what the Word of God declares. And as believers, we know that the Bible teaches that there is faith in healing. Even those people now, they, they make fun of it. And by the way, we need to select what we see and hear because there is children of the devil. They want to destroy your faith and they will continue to propagate this all kind of crazy thing. But we are children of God. We need to select what we, want, we need to hear and watch and see. Because when you hear the testimonies of the great work of God, it's build your faith up. That's why you need to select that. And I will touch on that later on. We will see one miracle today that Jesus had performed. And in this story, there is so much truth that we can learn from in order for us to see our miracle. And this recalls for us in Mark chapter 5. We look at this previous lesson 
that there is a man, he's the leader of the synagogue, Cyrus. He came to Jesus and said, my daughter needs your healing. And we read in chapter 5 that Jesus wants to go to his house right away. Show that he's willing, just like he told the leper who have asked him, Lord, are you will? if you will, I will be healed. And Jesus responds by reach out and touch him and say, I will be healed. And immediately, he will clean and heal. So Cyrus come and present his problem. He have his loved one, the daughter, need healing. And Jesus does not say this and that. The scripture tells us that Jesus go with him to his house to heal his daughter. But the story that we, we, we look at today is sandwiched between Jesus' response and before he arrived to Zairus' house to heal Zairus' daughter. There's a woman. She cut in because she had needs in her life. She cut in. And she able to scoop the healing that she so needed. And it showed to us her faith and there's principle that we can learn from. Mark chapter 5, verse 24 to 26 says, So Jesus went with him, and the great multitude followed him and drowned him. And we begin, continue on verse 25, and it said, Now a certain woman has a flow of blood for 12 years. And has suffered many things for many physicians. She has spent all that she had. It's way no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, noted that word, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd. She came. That's another key word that we will look at and touch his garment. Verse 28, 4, she said, I only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood were dried up, and she fell in her body that she were healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, in knowing in himself that power have gone out of him, turned around the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? But the disciples said to him, you see the multitude throwing you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done that, this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that she had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Verse 34, And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. What a faith. What an effort that this woman showed us. Just imagine this woman have this problem for 10 years. The bleeding condition particularly related to the female issue. And we say that this, instead of monthly, they have this. But for her, it's not stopped after a few days, but it's go on and on. Months, years, 12 years. It got to the point, I believe, that in, at this time, probably, she very, very weak because of this problem. Imagine her condition for 12 years. Let's go on and on. And verse 26 tells us that and had suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had 
and were no better, but rather grew worse. What a need. Observation will say that this woman's condition was critical. See, very sick. And that is where she need an intervention from God. She need to touch God to receive her healing. She spent all that she had with no improvement. And the third thing that we see here is she lived in isolation. You know, in the past when I read this story and heard about the leper, the, the, the people, or the woman who in their time of bleeding, um, they have declared unclean by the Levitical law. They cannot sit in a chair because the chair would become unclean if somebody sit on that chair after her. She cannot let people touch her because they become unclean. Isolation. And I never understand it until we face COVID. The isolation is terrible. When people look at you, if you cough, if you show any sign that they think that it's COVID, they want to steer away from you. They want to um, stand distant from you. Now, just imagine this woman. She cannot be with her husband. She cannot be with her children. And she cannot go out in the public. Because if she get caught touching people, make them unclean, they may stone her to death. Just imagine, see, weak. Not only isolation physically, but emotionally. And that is how many people around us, because of COVID, the isolation is, is, is get on them. I talked to one minister in New Zealand. He said that the percentage of people take their life, it jumped 300% in New Zealand. Because people are depressed, people are lonely, and they cannot handle it anymore. Isolation because of COVID has become something that I know that mankind we have to face for many years to come. People become depressed. You know, become all kinds of things going on. That's why I believe that um, a lot of people around us need a miracle in their life. Let's look at verse 27 to 34. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touch his garment. This woman somehow is able to hear about Jesus because of her unclean. I think she cannot go to church to the Jewish synagogue for 12 years. She's not able to fellowship with the, the people that share her faith have no communication, is no fellowship. The synagogue is, is a reduced spot because the children of Israel, they're in exile. And um, they cannot worship because there's no temple for them. So they come up with a, a place that's also become um, a place that 10 family, they, they build a synagogue so they can have their children come and play with each other, learn their language to give the Hebrew, and all kinds of things going on in the synagogue. This woman, for 12 years, she cannot go to the place that she used to go. So the thing that she heard is in, in the synagogue. And we don't know how. 
This can be that she heard from other people talking about their testimony. Maybe somebody shared and she overheard that there's a, a man named Jesus from Nazareth. He have healed of crippled. He his eye and he can see now. So she heard about Jesus. So she came behind him in the crowd to touch his garment. After she heard about Jesus, she pushed forward and came behind him. That's a wonderful thing that we need to learn. There's some time in our life that we need a touch from God. Nothing wrong with ask God to touch us because sometimes we're so weak we cannot push forward to come behind him. Like Elijah. He runs for his life. He's so weak that he cannot go to God. God sent his angel bring bread and, and, and water, come and minister to Elijah. There's many stories that people who so weak they cannot come to Jesus. So Jesus come to them. But the rest of miracle, we see that there's something that we need to learn this morning. Rather waiting for God to come and touch us, we need to have the kind of faith and action that this woman has, that she should go to God. She touched God. And because of her touch of faith, she has activated the anointing of Jesus and able to receive her healing. And that is something that we need to learn. Yes, there's time that we pray and ask God to touch us. But many times, according to the word that we can learn, that we need to learn from this woman. She pushed forward. She come behind him. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She come and he, she touched Jesus. What an action that is taught us so much. And verse 28, For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She said. That's another thing that we need to learn from her. That we need to find out what God's word said about and begin to speak it out loud. Begin to put it through our mouth and speak it out. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She speak into existence things that she heard and faith have built in her life that she begin to speak it out loud. Praise God. And the scripture says, immediately the fountain of her blood were dried up and she fell in her body that she was healed of the affliction. She tired of her sickness. And she decided that she need a miracle from Jesus because men have gone so far. She has spent all the money that she has. And the physician at that time cannot do anything for her. When she heard about Jesus, it's built her faith. And she speak it to herself and continue to push forward, push forward. She moved toward Jesus in order to receive her miracle. You know, people have this attitude and say, if God wants to touch me and heal me, he will come and knock on my door and say, hey, I want to heal you. And then I will open the door and 
invite him in and he will heal me. Um, in 35 miracles that Jesus did, only one case that Jesus went to the paralytic who waiting at the pool for the angel come and stir up the water so anyone who get in the water will receive the miracle. He did not ask. But Jesus came to him and said, do you want to be healed? And he, he responded like other human beings, most of us, and they say, I can't. Because when the angel comes and stirs up the water, somebody already get in before I can get in. And they get a miracle. Because he needs people help in order for him to come into the water. But Jesus healed him. Yes, there are times that God will come to us and touch us because we cannot help. We cannot come to him because the limitation of the physical condition we're in. But many, many miracles, we say that there's a part that we bring in our faith, our trust, our belief in Jesus, believe in God, and we touch him. I do something that God requires. And we see a miracle. I believe we can learn how to touch Jesus. That's called the power of God to be released, and we can see a miracle. There's four things, at least four things, that we can learn from this woman. Not a formula, but a principle that we can learn and apply it. First, find what the Word of God say about your situation. I believe the Bible is filled with story, testimony that we know that in every situation that we face today, there's nothing new under the sun. And God already did something for somebody in the Bible and the Holy Spirit have inspired the writer to jot it down. Like Apostle John said, if we recall every word and every miracle that Jesus did, then all the books of this world cannot contain it. But the Holy Spirit have inspired the writer to write down specific miracle. And if you look at the 35 miracles, you see not only healing, but miracle of provision, miracle of Jesus walking water to come and help and rescue them when they right in the middle of the storm. This miracle that Jesus come in and raise people from the dead. Miracle that Jesus come and he multiply bread to feed the multitude. There's all kinds of miracle, provision, healing, rescue, showing power and miracles of, of deliverance of people who have been uh, demonized and bent over for that uh, woman for 18 years. He cannot stand straight up. But have to learn to live with that condition until Jesus come, cast out that demon, touch her, and she stood straight up. We need to learn from the Word of God. Because there is a principle that I learned a long time ago and it's helped me and I want to share with you this morning is 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heard us. And if we know that He heard us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. So we see here that we have a confidence to come to God when we find out his will. And last week, we have been reminded God's will is to heal people. The leper asked Jesus, if you will, I will be healed, Jesus said, I will. 
So God's will, according to the Bible that I learned, is to heal us, to heal people. Because you have to foretell in Isaiah chapter 53 that there is a, is a provision for our healing that is take the Messiah, the suffered servant of God, to take on his back, his body, our sickness and sorrow. Now God already announced that. 700 years later, when Jesus come and wear this earth suit and this body, he go to the cross and on his way to the cross, he receive, slash the strike on his back to fulfill, to pay for, so we can have our healing. Now he go through all of that to provide for us. And I believe that God's will is to heal us. And we need to learn and recognize and believe in that. Because just like the leper we learned last week, he never questioned Jesus' ability to heal him. But he had voiced the question that many of us ask. Is in my situation, in my case, is God's will to heal me? to rescue me out of this? The question of, are you willing? And I want to help you to remember God willing. His will is carried out by Jesus. You go about doing good and heal all the people who have been afflicted by the devil. God will is heal us. Now there is another very important thing that we need to learn. His will is always want to heal us. But he may have a plan. And his plan is beyond our understanding. The mystery of God's wisdom and plan. He may have a special plan for our life. He may have something that um, he has in mind. But in the end, always good. Like Lazarus. When Lazarus gets sick, his sister sent word to Jesus and say, your beloved friend is sick. The scripture tells us that Jesus linger and stay, dare not come back, not rush back to heal Lazarus. And the condition getting worse. Lazarus died. They bury him until the fourth day. Jesus come back and declare the word Lazarus come forth. Lazarus come back alive. The scripture tells us that the Jews who were watching Lazarus' family, they watching, watching, and they become believed. Because the way that they continue to trust on Jesus, the way that they go through the suffering and able to receive the miracle that they ask for, even though it is delay to the point of impossible. But finally, they receive it. When Jesus commanded that word, say, Lazarus, come forth. I believe that he had to be specific because all the death around him and those graves around him, people will walk out of that grave. Specifically, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus walked out from that grave. The grave clawed and continued to still on his body, and they had to help him ungrab it. So, settle in your heart that the will of God, what the will of God is for our life, what the will of God is for our healing, what the will of God for provision for his children. He said the Gentile, they, they fight for, they worry about what to eat, what to wear. And he said, don't, don't, 
don't copy them. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add unto you all those things. Because now, when you enter into the kingdom of God, you become his children. When you become his children, God is your father, and he will provide for you. Remember, and settle in your heart what is the will of God is. Verse 27, Mark 5, 27, when she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, very important. Like I said in the beginning, we need to selectively hear from Jesus. I know that all things is going on right now. We have access to all kind of sound uh, bite and all kind of thing is going on and we may get ourselves down in the unbelief. The expression of the atheists, the expression of people who are anti-God and His will affect us. Let choose to hear about Jesus especially when you need a miracle. I encourage you to search and hear the testimony of those who have experienced the miracle. Because that will strengthen your faith. It will help you like this woman when she heard about Jesus. She heard about, she not heard directly from Jesus, but heard about Jesus. And something begins to happen in her. Faith begins to arise. And she pushed forward into action. And she received her miracle. Matthew chapter 14, verse 34 to 37. We don't know the chronological of this scripture compared to the story that this woman got healed. It's before or after. If it's before, then maybe this story that she heard, Matthew 14, verse 34 to 36, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, verse 36, and begged him that they may only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touches will make perfectly well. She may heard from them. Heard from the story of healing by touching Jesus. Now, if it's behind and after um, the story that this woman will heal, it's have another effect. That maybe these men, these people, they heard from her story that she came up behind Jesus and touched his garment and she immediately received her miracle. It's encouraged their faith. Let it come and ask Jesus, just allow them only touch the hem of his garment, and many touch it and were perfectly well. Learn from this. When you go through difficulty and you believe for a miracle, document it. And when you receive your miracle, share it. There's a power that we can have victory over the devil. It's a word of our testimony. And we'll help a lot of people. That they come to a place and say, if God can do that for my brother, my sister in the church, he can do it for me. If he do it somewhere else, he can do it right here. And that's helped us. Story after story that people heard or watch, you know, story of miracle that um, God have used me to be part of. That strengthen people's faith and they begin to try to get in touch with me. 
um, to receive the ministry. And many received the miracle. I remember the, the miracle that um, Joe Terrace uh, with me when this happened. It's the healing of Chin um, Spy. Her leg had grown evenly and she can stand up and walk straight. Somehow on that day, there's a man, he became famous with his um, sound bites of his word. It's growing, it's growing. Because he, he witnessed for the first time something like that has happened. And that piece, a video put on YouTube and it traveled. It's going before me way to Vietnam. I remember after that when I'm in Vietnam, people look and say, oh, I saw you on TV. I saw you on YouTube. And many people came with faith because they saw that. They received a miracle. Colorblind eyes in instantly be restored and they can see perfectly all the color. Healing take place. People lost their eardrum because of the infection. Receive it. Back problem receive healing. And those people become believers. And they go and share their story and strengthen many more people. So it can be that her story have helped and encouraged many people in surrounding region brought to Jesus who was sick and begged him that they may only touch his hem of his garment. And they are healed. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 tells us something else that we can see here. But to you who fear my name, the sons of righteousness shall raise with healing in his wing, and you shall go out and grow fat like star-fed calf, the wing of the garment. It's a corner. It's a corner of the garment. I have with me here is a prayer shawl. And many scholars, when they look at this story, it can be that that woman, she came behind Jesus and she touched not his clothes, but the corner of this garment. This is prayer shawl. A Jewish man put on his head around his shoulder when they pray. We believe that Jesus, maybe on that day, wore the prayer shawl. And the four corners of the way that the knot is have been tied differently. Every knot has different number of amount of the thread is go around it. It's all signifying the word of God. So that woman on that day, when she reached and she able to hold on to this corner, touched the hem of his garment. She touched the representative of the word of God. Remember the word of God bring healing to us. She touched and she got her healing. Because the words say in Malachi chapter 4 verse 2, but to you who hear my name, the son of righteousness, shall rise with healing in his wing. This word, wings in Hebrew, is the same thing, the corner. I noted that the son of righteousness, our capital, that talking about Jesus, on his wing. Maybe this woman also know this scripture. And she believed that Jesus is the Messiah that I've been talking about. So she go behind him and by faith push through the crowd. Risk that she may be stoned to death when people find out that she has an issue of blood. 
risk be chastised by Jesus. That's why she's scared and she reports what's going on when Jesus asks, who touched me? Risk all of that in order for her to grab the hold of the promise of the Word of God. Some scholars say that if you count all the knot in the pressure, it's always come out 39, 39 knot. This can be the picture of the 39 stripe that Jesus has received on his back to bring healing to us. It's an important thing that we, we need to learn in order for us to push behind Jesus, behind God, to touch him, is to learn from the Word of God, to see what the Word of God said about your situation. With the technology nowadays, the Bible, uh, in PC, in our um, device, you can go and search healing scripture. And you will see that there is a lot of scripture talking about God's provision of healing. Scripture of God miracle of provision, you can see that. Take time to go and learn and search for the Word of God. And pray to see which word is applied in your situation. And begin to do the second thing that I advise you to do is meditate on that scripture. Meditate on the scripture from the Word of God. It's very important. We need to let that word begin to fill us, fill us, begin to live with that word. So faith come arise in you that you can get to the point that is so filled in you that you can take action and push you to take action. Learn to picture that scripture in your mind. Meditation is you bring the scripture that you learn, you memorize and bring it up. And you begin to meditate, you think about it, you meditate on it. And many times, I heard testimony in my experience, is when you begin to put yourself in that scripture. There's a ministry called Faith Come by Hearing. They report story after story around the world when oral learners, when they hear, they gather together and they hear the Bible um, read it to them through audio's Bible. And many times, people who sat there blind and they heard the story, oral learners have something that uh, have more advantage in, to us. It's because they cannot read the word. But they can hear. They put themselves into the story. They heard Bartimaeus say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Bartimaeus received his eyesight. He got healed. And the people who are blind, and they sat there and they heard that and they begin to put themselves into the story. And just like that, their eyes is open, creative miracle has happened. And they see. I heard a story that people carry the cripple in the wheelbarrow and they just dump them right in the middle of the group that gather together to hear the Bible. Probably... I hear the, the word when Jesus healed the cripple. They rise up and they walk. Put yourself, picture yourself in the word of God. Put yourself in there. Well, that's faith. You let the word of God so fill you that every time you hear a word coming in, you take it in, you take it in, you take it in until you're so full with the word of God. There's a power of vision and imagination that you can see. The scripture tells us the principle that whatever you can see, you can receive it. 
remember the story of Jacob. He would cheat on by his father-in-law at least 10 times for the wage that he, he should receive. And his father-in-law just changed rule midway and cheat him at least 10 times. And finally, God sent a picture for him that um, he will have a lot, a lot, and a lot of life stock. So he came and proposed to his father-in-law and say, now, if you have the sheep that is all in one color, their wool is in one color, it belongs to you. But those who have speckle, stripe, different color mixed in their wool, it's we mine. And the scripture tells us that Laban, Jacob's father-in-law, says, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. So he begin to tell his son to select all the sheep that have stripe, speckle in their wool and separate them and let Jacob only have one pure color of wool that he tend. But the scripture tells us in Genesis chapter 30, verse 37 to 39. Now Jacob took for himself rod of green poplar and of the almond and the chestnut tree, peeled white strip in them and exposed the white which is was in the rock. And the rod which he has peeled to set before the flock in the girder, in the water drop, where the flock came and drink, and so that they should conceive what they came to drink. So the flock concealed before the rod, and the flock brought forth street, speckle, and spot. Check up tap in into this principle it's called you get what you see and this is where when you read the word of God and you put yourself in there did you hear the scripture about God provision for your finances put yourself in there and say I will receive it because I can see that and, and, and get action, do something. If you want the provision of finances, that you can save money, then after you see yourself there, go to the bank and open an account for a saving account. And you may say, but pastor, I need money. I don't have Go and ask them for the minimum that you can open a saving account. Because that action is so that you trust in God. You see yourself that you will receive your provision of finances. God will do a miracle. But you need healing for your own body or somebody that you love. You can see that if you can bring them in front of Jesus, they will be healed. Like the four friends that, have, that just go through all the trouble even to open a hole on the roof in the house where Jesus is teaching there and low the cripple in front of Jesus. And Jesus looked and this four friend is still on the roof. And he reward their faith. So she, Jesus saw their faith and healed this crippled man. Take action. Show your faith. Put yourself in the picture. The language of the Holy Spirit is vision and imagination. Like Abraham, God took him outside of the tent and said, go and look and count all the star. And if you can count it, 
That's the number of your descendants. Like star in the sky. Like sand grain in the sea. The power of what you can see. Change what you are seeing or the vision that you have for your life. After you see it, begin to rearrange your life. This woman may be sat at home suffering, but she able to see. She tell herself, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. That's the third point that we need to get ourselves ready to touch God, to speak God's word. There's a power to speak into existence what you believe. The word said here in the Greek is saying repeatedly. You continue to speak over and over and over and she spoke what she believed over and over again to build her confidence into being healed. She talked to herself. She speak it out loud. It's another principle that we can learn. We need to declare it. We need to speak into existence. Romans chapter 4, verse 20 to 21, give us the picture of the man who become the father of faith for all of us, even the father of faith for three major religions. His name is Abraham. He got a promise that he have a promised son. And from that son, his descendant will be numerous. The scripture tell us, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. You see here, Abraham, what did he do? He not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He make an effort to do not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced. The word convinced here means to fill it up so full that you have no room for doubt. Go to the Word of God. Receive your promise. Imagine you in that scripture. Picture that you in the midst of that. Picture that your loved one begin to walk, your loved one be healed, your loved one we walk in the miracle that God promised. See it. Declare it. Just like Jacob allow the sheep to look at something and it becomes something that they can see even able to give birth to those sheep that is speckled, strive, spot. Maybe part of the reason we struggle with believing and doing is because we are not spending enough time in the saying and the seeing to get full. And the devil have a tendency and a plan to take you out from that. Many times in life, when I receive something from God and believe for it, and things happen, and the devil will say, No, God will not do it. And he may send words and saying of other people that will challenge your faith. So keep trusting, saying the word, seeing it until it's so full inside of you that is will leading you to. Principle number four is act on God's word. Like Peter, when he heard Jesus say, Come, C O M E, he stepped out of the boat and stepped on water based on what Jesus said. 
the Word of God in Jesus. Make sure that you have correspondent action lined up with the Word of God. Do not talk yourself out of the blessing by beginning to speak contrary to what the Word of God says. But push in. Faith has to couple with action. James chapter 2, verse 17. In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is death. In the Amplified Version, say, So also faith, if it does not have work, deed, and action of obedience to back it up by itself, is destitute of power, or is mean inoperative or dead. We need to act on the Word of God. That woman, she came and she reached in with all her might, just imagine 12 years, keep bleeding and bleeding. She pushed in and she put in and she able to reach the corner of Jesus' garment, represent the Word of God. Touch it. And the scripture said that immediately she feel well. Her infirmity left. The bleeding stopped. Acts on God's word. Mark chapter 5, verse 34, and we close. When Jesus turned around and looking for who just touched him, to touch his garment. Now, his disciples think that um, they know better than Jesus, they said. The crowd is pushing you around. You say, who touched me? Let Jesus know what happened. Because he feels there's power left him. The principle here is a lot of people may push God around. But their touch is not intent to touch but this woman, she have the intention, all the intention is, if only I can touch his garment, I will be healed. And her touch is totally different with the crown because her touch of faith. And immediately she received her miracle. We all need miracles. But instead of waiting and say, God, I need a touch from you. Learn from this woman faith and miracle to get ourselves ready. Push in. Draw closer to God like she did. Came behind him and touch him. May God help us to have that kind of faith and take action because God will come through for you. God will respond to your faith and your action according to His will. Somebody used this picture and it's helped me a lot. In fact, there's a parcel of healing in the 19th century. He said the power of God and the anointing is just like electricity. Like right now, in this room, we're surrounding with electricity. But it takes men to discover the, the power of electricity and apply it to become the blessing for mankind the discover of the presence of electricity. And then there's a piece that's very important is the connection. I can take this cell power speaker and throw at you and there's nothing come out because it needs to plug in to the electricity in order for it to work. This connection needs to be there. 
And when you have faith and you connect it with God through His Word, you will see suddenly lights is lit up, amplified sound system begin to function, and everything is working. Make the connection. This power of God run here. The creative miracle of God is here. And I encourage all of you, by faith, make that connection. And let it manifest to us. You may not understand it's all, but you know it's work because it's already proven time and time over. And when you walk to that wall, you begin to flip the switch, you see your light to turn on. May God help us to get ourselves ready to touch God to receive our healing, our miracle of provision, and everything that we need in our, in our lives that need God intervention. Does that help anybody in this place? Amen. Would you rise to your feet and let's pray? Father, we need a supernatural faith right now. For our situation. And Father, I pray that your word today we come loud and clear in our mind, in our heart, in our spirit to strengthen our faith supernaturally because it's based on your word so we can see miracles for ourselves, for the needs that we need intervention from you. And Lord, together we can see miracle, the miraculous will happen through us when we come together and touch you. It's a miracle that can happen to our loved one, the people that you send into our life so we can minister to them. We thank you, Lord. I speak the word of faith on your situation if you need healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. I speak into your financial situation in the name of Jesus. Receive the provision from God. Receive it in Jesus' name. If you need breakthrough, receive it. Because God is the God of breakthrough. Receive it in Jesus' name. Father, help us, Lord to improve and strengthen our faith through your word. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Walk in the miraculous and see that many things that you need, you will receive intervention from God. And together, we prepare ourselves for the day that God will use us in a mighty way to be a blessing to this city, to our community. God bless you and see you next service. Amen.